This is Chris with Console Customs, and today I am bringing you an installation video of our PlayStation 5 DualSense True Fire Rapid Fire mod. To install any of our mods, there's a few tools that you are going to need and a few optional tools that can be helpful and may also be required if you purchase buttons or paddles that you'll install along with the mod. So definitely one thing you'll need is a soldering iron something that is between uh, 30 and 40 watt uh, or if you have an adjustable temp soldering iron one that is between 350 and 400 degrees Celsius if you are planning to install buttons you also need a hot glue gun uh, just any crafting type hot glue gun will work fine for that to open your controller you need a Phillips PH00 size screwdriver. We sell these small ones as options along with all of our kits if you don't have one. And you will also optionally need either a pair of tweezers or a plastic pry tool and uh, potentially like some needle nose pliers. All of our kits include with them small bundle of wire which you'll need for installing the mod also for installing buttons or paddles and we also include some desoldering braid uh, this helps if you get solder someplace you don't want it connect two pins together somewhere uh, this can be used to fix that and we'll show you how to use that later in the video as I mentioned earlier we do sell optional buttons and paddles that can be used with any of our mods so we offer a few different sizes of buttons. We have a smaller 6 millimeter button and a larger 12 millimeter button and also a 2 and 4 button paddle. For installation of these you will need a drill bit. So for the paddles we need this small drill bit which is a 3 30 seconds inch drill bit. Uh, metric that's 2.35 millimeter I'm not sure if that's a size available in metric drill bits, but you'll need something close to that. Uh, for the 6mm button, you will need a 9 64 inch uh, drill bit, and that is uh, equivalent to 3.5mm metric bit. And for the large buttons, you need a 9 32 inch drill bit, or metric, you need a 7mm drill bit. Okay, to get into this controller, the first thing that we need to do is remove this black trim. So this is just held in by clips, and that's easily removed with either using a little pry tool or your built-in pry tool of a fingernail. Just we want to get underneath both sides here and just slowly work our way up both sides. Comes off pretty easily. Pop it up over the thumbsticks and slide out. You want to make sure not to bend too much to not break those little tabs off and we can set that aside so if we flip this over we can see there's two Phillips screws there those are not the only ones the other two are underneath the bumpers R1 and L1 so again you could use a pry tool I like to use a curved tip pair of tweezers and we just have to pop off these bumpers side and then we can see those other two screws there. So we'll quickly go ahead and remove these screws. Okay now we can go ahead and remove the back. So again there's actually two small clips here we need to pop off. Once we pop those open, we can separate the shell and it just pops off. So there's a look inside the controller. We need to remove the battery. So we can just kind of grab, pop that out. And then there's another screw holding the tray in place. along 
with the tray there is this microphone so we need to pull that out of the socket as well just uh, you can just grab that with your fingers there's a small tab there to help get that uh, or you can use tweezers and it just pulls straight out so we'll set that aside and then we can remove the battery tray all right the next thing we need to do is remove the two ribbon cables that go to our trigger assemblies so those have nice big tabs on them we just want to grab those tabs and pull it out try not to grab the flex itself just use the tab and then also we have this ribbon connector that is from the touchpad this one is usually in there pretty tight so I like to grab that tab with a pair of pliers to pull it out and then one more ribbon cable uh, which is this guy down here and that is for this other microphone Okay, once we have all those removed, now this circuit board can pop out. As you can see what happened with mine, there's a little speaker here that came along with the board. So just be aware of that. It fits in this small square in here. You can just put that back. That only connects by pressure to these two tabs here okay from here our mod is going to install basically just like this we want to line up the holes in the mod with the holes in the board and we'll make a solder connection for our power and go on from there but before we do that I wanted to talk about the trigger connections one of those we might want to connect a wire for before we get too far into this. So I'm going to show you guys here. Pop out these ribbon cables that are for the trigger modules. And we have to make some connections here for R1, L1, R2, and L2. So if we look here on this side this top pad right here is for L2 and this bottom one is for L1 so we have to solder wires to that and it's best to do that without this ribbon cable in there now the same thing is on the other side except the R1 connection is kind of buried back behind there um, you may be able to try and solder to that but my suggestion would be to not do that one right there Instead, we look at this board, both of these ribbon connectors, we can solder to the legs to get the same connection. And ultimately this may be the easier choice, but we can look right here and if this second leg on this side, that is for R2 and the fourth leg that is for R1 so if anything we want to use just this one right here for R1 to make our connection for the mod later on and I was just doing that now before we get any further into the mod installation so what I like to do is just kind of prop the thumbsticks up on the shell give us a nice clear view of that leg we need to solder to and uh, we can take a small piece of wire we'll strip the end of that it's 30 gauge wire so you need a 30 gauge wire stripper or just melt the end of it with your soldering iron so when we're doing this 
This is uh, the main reason we include that desoldering braid because this is probably the most difficult uh, soldering point that's required for the mod. So what you will want to do is just take put the tip of your soldering iron on that fourth leg and add some solder to it. Now if you do, like I just did right here, and solder two legs together, it's going to cause some problems in the controller if we left it like that. So we can't do that. We need to separate those. Sometimes you can just use your soldering iron and kind of swipe between those two joints and it will separate just like I did there. But if that does not work, just put it back. where it's uh, soldered together again. This is where that desoldering braid can come in handy. Basically what happens is we place this on top of the solder we want to get rid of and then place our soldering iron on top of that. It heats up and the solder will wick into this braid. Sometimes you may need to turn the heat up on your soldering iron a little bit for that to work. But as you can see now, there is. Let me get it into focus. There's solder there in that braid. And we can go back to our controller and look. And now there's no solder on those legs anymore. So we've separated them back out. We can go back to what we were doing. So that basically removed all the solder from the leg, so we're going to just add a little more solder and solder our wire to that leg. For all the other connections, we'll use these larger pads here. I'll show you that later. Right now we can get back to actually installing the mod. So we will place this in here. We want to line the holes up. And there is one large pad here that's for the power. So that's this guy right here. And on the mod there's also a small little cutout that we will solder right to that so we just want to make sure the holes are lined up and then make that solder connection. I am just going to remove the mod for a second and add a little bit of solder to that pad ahead of time. It will just make it easier to solder the mod to it. Put that back in, get our holes nice and lined up. solder that connection. This is the only soldering that we need to do on this side of the board unless we want to connect the touchpad. So if you would like to connect the touchpad, this is an optional connection. Um, we made it optional because it is, again, a quite difficult connection, but it's not required like the trigger is. So for the touchpad, there is a very, very small via right next to you. can see that cut out on the board, and we have to uncover that. So if you would like to do that, you will need a very small drill bit. And I just do this by hand, just get that aligned, centered with the uh, that small via. Usually can kind of feel the drill bit drop right into there. And 
and we are going to give it a few spins by hand. Which just cleans off that green coating off of there. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but now the copper is exposed and we could go ahead and solder that. Uh, we're just going to skip that at the moment. The other thing uh, you may want to do is just down around in this open area here where the LED is. We just want to make sure our LED is lined up right next to this other LED that's on the controller and maybe put a small dab of glue there to hold that in place. Small dab of hot glue. So we'll hold our board down in place. Our LED lines right up with the controller's LED. And we can go ahead and flip the board back over. Make sure all of these other ribbon cables are not underneath the board. So one for the microphone here and the touchpad. Make sure those are out over top. And now we can take and flip this part of the mod over right onto the thumbstick solder connection. So that basically flips right over and lines up with the thumbstick solder point that we can make. So for both sides, we'll just flip this over real quick. And make sure that uh, our thumbstick connection is through that hole. Hold our soldering iron there for just a second. Do that on both sides. both thumbstick connections done which also holds our mod in place and we can work on our trigger connections so you can see we have connections for R1, R2, L1, L2 and we need to make those connections so I will normally take in in these pads and do the same thing with the pads on the trigger modules that we need to solder to. We'll add some solder to those. You may want to move the board out of the way and also make sure that our Ribbon cables are completely out of the modules because that we don't want to risk melting that ribbon cable. And again, on this side, we're only doing R2 because our R1 is connected with this yellow cable here to the uh, ribbon connector. So I will take a few other pieces of wire here. And we'll make sure those are stripped. And we can use these for the rest of our trigger connections. So we have our R2 
part two. L1 and L2. So we just want to make sure these are long enough that it's not going to interfere with the battery. So just make sure like for the, the R2 here we wrap it around down to the board and give yourself enough slack to get to that connection without being caught so it doesn't catch with the battery. So we give ourselves a little extra for all these. Just trim them down. And then we'll strip the end of those wires. Now we can solder those wires to the mod. So we'll take R1 and R2. And L1, L2. If you do not have any plans on installing extra buttons, then you are done at this point. We just have to put everything back together. But uh, we are going to go ahead and install one of our four button paddles to this just to show you how that goes and uh, show you where those connections will be. Okay, so let's just talk about our button connections real quick. So we have the possibility to connect five buttons. The four pads, which are labeled M1 through M4, these are remapping buttons. So adding buttons to those connections, we can map them to any standard controller button. Uh, the triggers are face buttons, the X square triangle circle, and direction of the D-pad, thumbstick clicks, and if you connected the touchpad, the touchpad click. And the fifth button, this is the one labeled here, the mod button. This is a button you can add for turning rapid fire and other features on and off. Without that button, you mainly use left on the D-pad, so holding left plus the trigger turns on rapid fire, left plus X turns on jump shot, and so on. So you can connect all of those buttons if you like. You could do a four, uh, four button paddle plus a fifth button for the mod button. Uh, today we're just going to install a four button paddle. Before we go ahead and do that we'll get uh, a lot of these ribbon cables plugged back in just so we don't forget. So I'm going to plug back in the touchpad ribbon cable here. And we will plug back in our ribbon cables for triggers And then we can plug back in the one ribbon cable for the microphone, which got stuck underneath our board. So 
I want to pull that back out. And if that does pop out, this should slide just in that little opening there and sit like that. So now let's go ahead and work on our paddle setup. So we'll move the controller out of the way. And now I will show you guys how to install one of our paddles for use with the mod. So today I will use one of our four button paddles. So we can add four buttons to this controller. And with this, we want these blue buttons to be towards the bottom of the controller. So it will mount basically like this. Found the best place is really to align the bottom edge of the paddle with the center of the microphone hole there. So we just get the paddle centered up. You can hold it there. Just like that and we'll take and mark our two holes and that is where we need to drill two of our holes and then we'll drill a third hole in the middle to uh, run our wires through. So for the paddles to make these holes we are going to use our 3 32nds inch drill bit and just line up and So now we have our two holes to mount the paddle and we will drill a third hole in the middle to run our wires through. Just like that. With our three holes drilled we can now work on the paddle itself. We'll grab our paddle and we have five connections on here so one two three and four for our buttons and then the g-pad in the middle is a ground pad we need to solder wires to all five of those so I will first start off by just tinning those connections this makes it a little bit easier than trying to hold a wire and solder and a soldering iron all at the same time and I've got some wire, five wires, five different colors. We generally include five colors of wires when you buy a paddle, four button paddle. It makes it a lot easier to know where your connections are going. So these I've already cut down, stripped uh, the ends a little bit. So we'll just go ahead and connect these to our pads here. Okay, so we have all five of those soldered. And when we put them through the controller, we're going to put those wires through the middle hole. But before we do that, we need to uh, get the uh, paddle set up with some screws. So when you 
purchase uh, one of the paddles from us. It comes with kind of a slew of things here. We've got two screws, four plastic nuts, and four plastic washers. So if you used uh, the size drill bit we recommend, the uh, 3 30 seconds, you should only need to use a screw, one washer, and one of the nuts uh, per hole. So we, uh, if you do it this way, you can basically just screw the paddle right into the plastic shell and we don't need another nut on the other side. But uh, I'll show you both ways. Also if you don't like the spacing of the paddle, if you want more space between the buttons and the shell or less space, you can add another washer or take that washer away. It's just there to create spacing, uh, customized spacing of the paddle. But uh, with just one washer in there, it puts it right uh, where the buttons are just barely touching the shell and it gives them a nice feel. So we're at this point right now and we can take our wires, put them through our center hole. And on the PS5, we want to mount this with the blue button facing towards the bottom of the controller. So now we can see our holes line up there. Take our same PH00 screwdriver, just kind of work back and forth, screw that in. Got a little bit of play, we can kind of line it up. And there we go. So our buttons, we can feel them, they feel good. If you want to change the, the depth, just add or remove the washers like I mentioned. And if you happen to use a larger drill bit and your paddle doesn't just screw nice and snug into the shell, there's enough, just enough screw coming through on the inside that you can screw a nut on the inside to help hold it in place. All right, now that our paddle is mounted and ready, we can bring our controller back over and make those solder connections. So when we look at these pads for the buttons, there is a round pad and a square pad. So the square pad is the ground connection. So each button pad has a ground connection. Those are all connected together. And with the paddle, we only need to use one of those. So that was that center pad connection on there, the one labeled G, which I used uh, this white wire. That's where I soldered the white wire to. So we will use just one of those. It doesn't matter which one. They're all the same. And then our other four buttons, we connect to each of the round pads that we want to use. So we'll use the M1 round pad, uh, M2, M3, M4. We'll use those pads. So again, just like I did on the paddle, I'm going to add some solder to those pads that we are going to use. Just one of the square pads. And we can go ahead and solder all our wires. Okay, now that we have all of our wires soldered, we can finish putting the controller together. So 
So we will go ahead and put our battery tray back in and put one screw back in with that. Plug our battery back in. And then we just have to make sure that uh, the wires go up and sit on top of the battery. So just kind of keep those where we want them while we're putting this back together. Actually, before we do that, so many things. We forgot the, uh, the other microphone. So we have this other microphone that goes on top of the battery tray here. Don't want to forget that. And again, this has a little extra piece that goes under a little tab there to hold it in place. Now we can put it together. Make sure our tabs click. Everything snaps together and we can put our four case screws back in. Alright, and the last two steps are to put our bumpers back on. They just snap into place once they're lined up. Don't force them. It should snap in fairly nicely. And then just our final black piece here. We just want to make sure that those two little tails there go into the holes on the case over the thumbsticks. And it all snaps down, and we're done. You can find all of our mods along with user guides on our website, consolecustoms.com. You can also find them for sale on our eBay store and soon on Amazon. Thanks for watching.